Moikka moi! Or good evening or day, depending where you are. Let's again see if I can see myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. looking that it is broadcasting. So let's first add the link to the announcement post where there's all the links for the products. Should you want to check those out? Now it should be pinned to the top. So, this is something we are doing, or I am doing <laughs> today. Hey, bye, hey, Heidi. A kind of play between molded three dimensional embellishments and then die cut quite flat things and I'm using inks to color color the project except for the bottles because they are made out of hot glue so we need some kind of other medium for those so hopefully you can see and hear me correctly hey hey Asta in case let's say you don't hear anything so please Please let me know, but otherwise I'm assuming that we are okay. Still a couple more minutes before we start actually. So a cup of tea perhaps or other beverage depending. Hyvin kuuluja näkyy. Kiitos Heidi. Okay, now there's some noise coming outside but we don't mind about that like always you are welcome to ask questions also in finnish and i will answer them in both languages se on sama suomeksi että kuten aina niin suomeksi saa kysyä ja vastaa sitten molemmilla kielillä jos jos jotain tulee mut pääasiallisesti höpötän siis niinku englantia mutta totta kai Jos jotain haluaa varmistaa tai, tai kysyä, niin suomikin käy. Almost time. Yeah, I thought that it would be kind of fun to combine the flat and the dimensional. But now that we have a little bit before the clock is actual live time. So if you have any suggestions for future lives... Please let me know if you want an art journal or more cards or whatever, then please let, let me know and I can then try to think of a project. <laughs> moi moi Nina! Okay, so let's get started. It's now 8 here, so let's move this aside, the sample, and move to the non-colored things. As you can see, I've pre-embossed, cut, and made the card base. Hi, Fiona! So, they are already. This one is made with an embossing folder, and everything comes out of one A4 sized bit. So, if you can, well, nowadays I like these kind of easel cards. So they're like this. So I've cut the sheet this way and created the crease for the card base. Then this piece I've embossed and then cut a little bit smaller so it fits inside the card base. And the rest is then the labels and plant parts. All the dies and embossing folders are mentioned in the blog post, which hopefully I managed to pin to the top. So let's move those because let's get started with these. These are made using this. So relatively new Finnabar mold with lovely 
bottles and as always I've used just hot glue to mold them so they don't look like much at this stage but because they are made out of hot glue I can't then use a heat tool at least not excessively so it's easier for me to paint them first and then let them air dry while I start to color the other elements. But let's first paint these. I'm using Toad Hall, so this is Paper Artsy Fresco Finish, so it's chalky, matte looking paint. And this is kind of a muddy green color. I thought it go nicely with that autumn kind of color palette I have going there and also kind of a bottle well not a usual bottle green because this one is way too beige let's say compared to what I think as bottle green it would be a rather a darker or more blue tone but maybe they would be kind of a clay bottles or something. Of course, I'm just using this color as I created the sample using it. But if you happen to craft alongside, then by all means choose another color or make them, for example, white and maybe even decoupage a little piece of pattern paper on top to give them that kind of a romantic feel because these are just bases you can then treat them with different mediums and colors and make them fit to your project I'm using a relatively small, a big brush so I get the job done quickly. So let's move these aside for a while and let them dry. Let's get rid of the paint. Sorry about the wobbling. And then let's color this piece. So I thought to use and kind of an orange blossom so I went with a contrasting color to the background using blues again it could be anything but I was thinking about those autumn nights at least here in Finland because they start to be a little bit darker and have this kind of a blue moment I'm using two distress ink colors chipped sapphire and stormy sky as the first layer I'll just move that aside so I don't add colorants to the ready card as well oops we need a little bit more water so this is just a puddle of inks and I'm dragging the card through the puddle. Let's draw this first layer and then add a little bit more. What you could do, of course, is to first color the piece of cardstock and then emboss it. But this way I thought it created a lovely, kind of a dimensional looking effect. As you can see from the ready card, there's still some white speaking through. And that's only possible when there's the raised motif when you start color coloring it. 
the other way around, then all of the whole paper would be colored blue and you didn't get that kind of a highlight of the texture. Just a little bit more. I'm adding more color using the inking tools, but wanting this splodgy looking first layer. I guess that's that's enough for now. So let's dry it again. See Daisy? Luckily we are not needing that in the next moment. Yeah, this is my blue version. So I'm adding some inks, the same that I used for the puddle, but this time with an inking tool. And again, you can see that there's the white places still kind of showing. I'm not going heavy-handedly, just a little bit inks to the, well, these flat white spots. It's okay for these spots to stay, stay white, but a little bit kind of evening it out this way. So there are still the splodges, the puddles, kind of as the first layer they are shown, but then another layer on top. And then, as you can see, there's quite a drastic difference between these two. And that's the next thing I'm then adding vintage photo. to the outer edge. This turns it more into a kind of a vintage one, having that brown around there, and then a teeny tiny touch to the motif as well. I'm now going very, very lightly because I only want to add the brown to the tops. So there we have the background. A little bit darker this time, but it's okay. Let's move that aside. Then, well, I had the vintage photo already going the brown ink, so let's ink this one. As you can see, there's kind of a stamped detail in this label. And that's something I think Tim showed in a Facebook, uh, YouTube Live. But I inked the dye before cutting and thus created this, this frame for my label. And also, what you can see, this was teal color, so really kind of vibrant. Just because I'm and then adding the brown on top, it kind of dulls the green as well. So it's not that kind of a vibrant popping too much anymore. That goes with the autumny, I'm not sure if that's a word, <laughs> color scene. Then let's add some water splashes there distress is a little bit. Okay. 
If you're just joining, welcome and hello. I'm doing a little mixed media card here. If you have any questions, just let me know. Juttu suomeksi, että jos, jos just liityitte ei on kysyttävä, niin ei muuta kuin kysymyksiä vastaan kummallakin kielellä. Like so. That's done. Then we need to ink these ones. Let's do the teeny tiny tag first. Because I'm not wanting this totally brown. So I think I have enough in my inking tool. I'm just going around the edges and then really delicately touching the center so it's more like a beige little tone than totally totally brown. Then let's first make that flower so not a big big new secret here just using different inks and inking the die cuts most often especially with these kinds of elements that are flowers or or something I die cut them from um, white piece of cardstock and then use some kind of colorants to turn them into the color I want but other kind of layering elements frames or that kind of so those I sometimes cut out of colored cardstock or even patterned cardstock but these they are just fun to cut from white and then especially if you pre-cut a bunch and then you can just color them whatever color you want in that particular project I'm kind of doing the same thing with these as I did with a recent video or then it's actually September video, I'm not totally sure now, but <laughs> then adding first a vibrant color and then dulling it with another more muted color or the same as with the background. First, hey Bahia! First I used the more vibrant blues and then added the brown around it. So the first color was crushed olive and this is brushed corduroy. If you want to know the colors, I'm just kind of dulling the green a little bit so it's not that spring-like anymore. So I'm going for an autumn kind of feel with this card. And then this one still. And then I'm adding a little bit of the brown as well. Like so. Um, vintage photo is kind of my go-to brown. I often use it. I just love the tone. With this flower I'm trying to kind of go around the edge with the brown so the middle would be still this vibrant or more vibrant orange and with the leaves kind of the opposite I'm adding the darker tone to the middle and letting those more vibrant greens at the ends of the leaves. Just delicately touching. And then for that one, let's keep that there because as you can see there are some difference come on with this leaf and this leaf so I need to cut some extra off 
Okay, yes, otherwise it might look funny. Not sure if I'm going to need this long stem even, but let's keep that one for now. Should I need it later? So it's easier to cut then. Now that there's a white kind of edge where it just cut, so I'm adding a little bit of ink on top so that white doesn't show that much. Then let's see if our bottles are already dried, more or less. There's some wet paint on the back of the bottles, but that doesn't matter. And I can just wipe it off. The hot glue embellishments endure a little bit of heat, so if I would need to dry them, I could quickly go with a heat tool all on top and they wouldn't wouldn't be destroyed but just not not too much only a little and then I also wanted some kind of a kind of a shadowy or more highlight the dimensional things a little bit more so I'm using an ink also for that but as I'm working on top of a non-absorbing surface it needs another kind of ink and I'm using archival for that. So just going around the edges, giving it a little bit of kind of texture dimension, illusion of texture, if nothing more. Yes, I think this one is a little bit more interesting than just one layer of color. But that's a professional preference. If you think the black is too harsh of a contrast, then of course use a green tone. Or if you have used white or, or any other color, just a little bit more kind of uh, not as big of a contrast might be better for some projects. But I'm all in for mixed media, so I always kind of suggest using a couple of mediums in an element because then they react nicely with the paint and the ink. Then I'm using the same ink for another little thing. Just couldn't, couldn't finish this one without some stamping. So I'm adding some teeny tiny text touches here and there. But as it's embossed dimensional background, so even if I'm pushing the stamp down hard, then only some of it will transfer to the paper because it's not an even surface where I'm stamping to. But I'm okay with that. This is just kind of creating a little bit of visual texture there. Then let's add the background to the card base. For that I'm using just a full-sided tape. Depending what I'm doing, as you can see from the process videos, sometimes I leave this stage as the last, but in this case, because there's the quite dimensional and also heavy bottle embellishments, I feel it's better to add the layer at this stage and then and then continue building the composition. Come. Doesn't want to come off. Or actually the whole thing wants to come off. 
Oh, no. Better. And then one more. Okay. So like I said in the beginning, if you have any suggestions about future lives, please let me know. If you prefer cards or art journal pages or, or whatever kind of project, so I can then try try to make such a project. Background in place. Then let's add the tag. Or no, not a tag, this is a label, sorry. Again, just double-sided tape. This card is a little bit different from what I usually do. Also in the terms that the layers are otherwise, except for the bottles, quite flat. Because in a kind of a normal project, I would then adhere this label, for example, using foam tape. But that would then cause a problem when I'm adhering the plants on top. And well, perhaps with the bottles as well, but especially with the plants, because they are so delicate, so adding foam tape underneath would be a kind of a hurdle to then overcome. So it's easier to maintain the layers somewhat flat. Like so. And oops. Not your time yet. Let's see how shall I make kind of a mirrored version or then that one to the side. Maybe let's try this one and see how the bottles then get aligned. That one there, that one there, and this one here. Hmm. Maybe. Let's go with that. <laughs> Although I kind of like that the the smaller bottle is in the middle in this one, but. I don't want to repeat the whole whole composition the same, so let's do a little bit of a twisty. For the plants, I'm just using craft glue, not putting it to every little bit, but just here and there, so it will then secure the plant in place. And as you can see, I'm then keeping the bottle in place when I'm adhering the flower so it's easier to get everything aligned. And then the next one, I'm guessing we can cut some of the stem away. No need to have it that long after all. Just some dots of glue. Here we go. And then this one in place. And then the last one. And as you can see, it's now peeking from underneath. So let's first cut it a little bit shorter. And then let's see the bottles go there. Come on, a little bit up, please. Yep. So there, let's see how this one goes because it's so long. If I manage to kind of get it in place with the bottle or if I need to move it then. I want that a little 
little bit there and then let's move that aside. Now the last thing I'm then doing is adhering the bottles in place but let's add the little detail, the label in one of them. I'm first threading through the tiny label and then I'm adding a knot close to the label. This is so tiny, I'm hoping you can see something. So it will then stay put where I want it to be. It also gets a little bit of the like visual texture there. And then let's just wrap it around. These bottles, labels and even maybe the colors, especially this one, the kind of a muddy Green would go to a Halloween card as well. We don't celebrate Halloween that much here in Finland, but it's kind of growing. So, come on. Then Let's cut the excess off, putting the other one a little bit shorter than the other one to have it a kind of a more detail. And then just glue to the hot glue embellishments now painted and looking a lot nicer than just white hot glue versions. Then, and then the last one. And after that, the card is then done. Oops, I need to put it there or I would always the leaf will show. So it's not totally centered, but it's okay. I like that. So here's the sample version and here's the one I made just now. Probably the biggest difference is the background color, where it seems that in the sample I probably used more stormy sky and here I used more chipped sapphire. But otherwise, they are done similarly or the same way. So hopefully you get some new ideas out of this or even enjoyed <laughs> watching. And as I said earlier, if you have any suggestions about future lives, please let me know. And I then try try to come up with a project that's that's something like like it. Kiitos Heidi. Eli jos on jotain toivomuksia seuraaviin liveihin, ensi kuussahan on taas suomenkielinen live ja sitten myös englanninkielinen, niin laittakaa kommenttia tai vaikka viestiä tulemaan, niin katsotaan mitä, mitä pystyn tekemään. This was quite a short live, but thank you for joining on Friday evening because when I realized that Tim Holtz has his live tomorrow I would have otherwise put it to a um, Saturday but thought that I'll put it here so then I actually can watch watch the live as well. So thank you so much for joining have a great day or evening or morning or night depending where you are 
or if you're watching the recording, thanks for you as well. But have a lovely weekend. We'll be seeing in September. Thank you. Bye. Kiitos, kiitos. Bye, bye.